All right, everyone. So I was just reading Josephus, and I found some things in this book that I just have to share with you because it's something that I have never heard of, and I'm pretty sure none of you guys ever heard of. So Josephus, I'm in the part where Josephus is talking about the Romans breaking into the temple and absolutely and utterly raising hell within the sanctuary, slaughtering everyone that they see. And Josephus talks about how there were thousands of corpses within the temple. It was so horrendous that uh, the Roman soldiers were struggling just to walk because there were so many dead bodies around. There was no mercy, not even for the children or the elderly. There was no quarter, no compassion, nothing. It was absolutely and utterly horrific. But Josephus goes on to talk about certain things, certain supernatural things that took place before the war broke out. He talks about how uh, before the war broke out, there was a star that shined above the city, and it was in the shape of a sword. People, for the most part, did not see the sign as anything to be worried about. And then there was the Feast of Passover. And during the Feast of Passover, or right in the beginning of it, thousands of people were in Jerusalem gathered together to celebrate the feast, and there was a light illuminating around the altar in the temple. Now, the average folk, the common folk, they saw this as a sign that God was with them. But the scribes, the religiously educated people, they saw this and they knew that something bad was about to occur. They knew that it was a sign from God not that something good was going to happen, but that something extremely destructive was about to occur. And he also talks about how um, during the Feast of Pentecost, before the war broke out, there was a prominent rabbi who went into the, uh, he went into the inner quarter of the temple and he heard a voice that was something like, let us leave this place. Let us get out of here. As if to say that God was saying, let's go. We're leaving this temple. So about four years or so before the war broke out, there was a man named Jesus. Now, this is not the Jesus in the New Testament. This is obviously a different Jesus because four years before the war, I mean, that was way after the resurrection. So four years before the outbreak of the war, there was a man named Jesus who would go throughout all the different parts of the city of Jerusalem. He would walk throughout the city of Jerusalem, declaring a prophecy, a voice from the east, a voice from the west, a voice from the four winds against the city and the holy place against the people. And he went around the entire city saying this over and over and over again every single day. It came to the point where the prominent citizens of Jerusalem, most likely the religious authorities, had him arrested and whipped. And they told him, never say these things ever again. They obviously saw what he, what he was saying as a threat to their authority. Kind of like what we read in the, in the New Testament. <laughs> so, the next day, he goes around the city saying the same things. A voice from the east, a voice from the west, a voice from the four winds, a voice against the city and the holy place, meaning the temple, a voice against the people. And he kept on doing this. So, the religious authorities in Jerusalem... Uh, had him turned over to the Roman government. And the Romans, the Roman procurator, pro procurator 
had him whipped so severely that you could see his bones. His bones were exposed. It was so bad. And they told him never, never to say these things again. Now, as he was being whipped, he was still saying these words, a voice from the east, a voice from the west, etc. So they took him for, for a madman. They say, this guy's obviously crazy. But because he was so persistent, because he continued on doing this, there were people around thinking, maybe this guy's on to something. Maybe he is a prophet. So the war breaks out, and Jesus the prophet is still alive. He's still alive. And he's still going around the city warning the people about this voice against Jerusalem. And then, at the end of the war, when the Romans were just about to break into the city, the Romans were launching rocks into Jerusalem, and a rock hit this man's head and killed him. And he, of course, before he died, he was saying these words. It's so fascinating to read this history. I, I really believe that Josephus's history of the Roman Jewish War should be not part of the New Testament. It shouldn't be canon, but it should be like an extension of every Bible, really, like just as a way for people to have a better understanding of the world that Christ and the disciples lived in. It truly is that fascinating. <clears throat> he starts giving us, like Josephus describes to us these signs that took place and these, these different omens that took place, seeing a star that appeared as a sword above the city, light uh, uh, emanating from the altar or illuminating around the altar, a voice within the temple being heard saying, let us leave this place. I mean, it's, it's just it's so fascinating, but it's so rich. Here was a man named Jesus, four years before the outbreak of the war, telling the people that God was going to destroy the city, that God was going to punish them. And the Jewish authorities had him whipped. Uh, they had him whipped one time, and then they warned him never to say these things again. He continues on saying these things, and then the Roman author the uh, Jewish religious authorities have him turned over to the Roman system, the Roman uh, uh, governor. And the Roman government has Jesus whipped so horrendously that his bones were exposed. And they didn't want to hear what he had to say. It's almost like a parallel to the life of the Messiah. Warning against uh, the people, you know, warning the people that God was going to punish them, not listening to him, having him turned over to Roman power to be punished. There are similarities. It's kind of like when you read the Old Testament and you read these different stories that parallel the life of Christ. In a way, this story parallels the life of Christ. And I really believe that God did leave warnings to the people. Even after the resurrection, God left warnings to the people, as is attested by Josephus. So, it's just really fascinating. I find this history so beautifully rich, horrifying, but at the same time, just really, really sublime in its own way. You, you have a better understanding of the world that Christianity began in. It began in a very dark world, but at the same time, it shows that God still gave a chance to the Jewish people to repent from their ways. And it really does show you that in history, God is found. And, if, and really, if in history God is found, that means that in these stories, we have an idea as to what the future holds. Anyway, you guys just heard some Theo Logi. God bless.